All right, so this demonstration that I definitely wanted to do for you the other day that I definitely did online for you, I want to just kind of do for you live. I have uh, tin chloride, which isn't very soluble, so it's going to make a milky kind of solution. It's a colloid. It's not really going to dissolve, but there's, there's some little bit of dissolving going on. So I've got tin plus two in the speaker to the left, okay? And uh, I know you don't see much of it uh, because it's kind of cut out. All right. And maybe we can make that a little bit bigger. All right. Um, let's see if I can make you bigger. There we go. There we go. Oh, I'm not sure. All right, so that'll probably be better. All right, so I've got the copper, uh, I mean the tin chloride to the left. And I'm going to add some water to some copper 2 chloride. And that does dissolve, and it gives you that greenish blue color. Although with my color blindness, it's tough to figure out exactly. Okay. And of course, the color due to the solution is due to the crystal field theory that we'll talk more about. Transitional metals have with the unfilled D orbitals absorbing certain wavelengths of light. Now, I've got these two solutions, and you have copper plus two in this beaker and tin plus two in this beaker. All right. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put some metals in there. All right. And I'm going to put copper in the tin plus two solution, and I'm going to put the tin, and I think tin is one of the, my, my more, more favorite uh, metals. Uh, a lot of luster, a lot of shine, and it bends very easily. So I actually really love tin. <laughs> tin is my, 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 my favorite metal, and if you played with it, you'd feel the same way about it. It's a very thick piece of tin, um, and it's very pliable. In any case, I'm going to put it in the copper um, plus two solution. Okay? Now, of these two reactions, one of these is spontaneous. Spontaneous means it will work. So if you look at the upper right-hand corner, uh, when we doing this, we can figure out that the, that the reaction okay, is going to be oh, copper going to tin. And the half reactions, of course, are right here. And copper will go to copper plus 2. Tin plus 2 goes to copper if, in fact, this works. Now, what you're going to do is, using your reduction potential table, is you're going to figure out that the half reaction of the copper is negative 0.34 when you consider the oxidation. You go to your reduction potential table, and you do the opposite, okay, and see that copper is oxidizing. So going in the opposite, you're going to flip the sign, okay? And if tin is going to have to reduce, as written on the reduction table, you write the negative 0.14. And what you do with them is, of course, you add them together. And what you get is a, a total net potential. E0 means if you're dealing with standard conditions, this chart is based on one molar solutions, you get negative 0.48 volts. And if you get negative 0.48 volts, that means it's not a thermodynamically, um, it's not a thermodynamic pathway that is going to be taken by charges. It doesn't happen under these conditions. So it's not spontaneous, which means to us that this reaction will not work, okay? And there will be no redox reaction here. And if I take this out, you'll see that all I have is a milky solution, okay, um, on the copper. There was no redox reaction because if you look at the half reactions again or look at the overall reaction, you would suspect that the copper would be plated with tin as we would replace the tin plus two with the copper plus two and kick out the pure tin. We don't see any tin, which you show has a luster, a silver luster being plated. It's not working. It's not spontaneous. It's not something you're going to see there. Okay? Now, the other reaction is the exact opposite. The other reaction, I have tin, uh, let's write right here. I have tin somewhere here. And maybe it will stay that way. So I have tin, supposedly the solid metal, becoming with the copper plus two, making pure copper. So in this reaction, I have the pure tin sitting in a copper plus two solution. That's what's happening right here. Okay. And uh, what's going to happen is, hopefully, if it, it's spontaneous, that we should be having pure copper being made. And the pure copper should plate onto the tin. Because as the tin gives 
supposedly, gets electrons to the copper plus two. The copper plus two gets reduced and goes to copper zero, which means it's no longer going to be attracted to the chloride ions, and kick out. The other one wasn't spontaneous, but this one, if you look at some net potentials, okay, and you go to your reduction potential chart, you'll see that the oxidation of tin. Excuse me, would you please send Sam Santora to the lobby for dismissal? Okay. You'll see that the tin has a positive net potential or a, a, a oxidation potential by what? Switching the, switching the value from the reduction potential. And you see that the copper plus 2, as written because it's getting reduced, is positive. And you take those values and together you get a positive 0.48 volts, which means it is spontaneous. Uh, you have a pathway for a potential difference to occur for charges to flow in this current. And this means that this does work under these conditions. And this is going to happen. So therefore, if I look on my tin, I should see all right, some copper plated. And that's that, that's that brownish red uh, substance is the pure copper. And if you look carefully, OK, and maybe it's hard to see, but in this beaker, you notice the tin chloride, you notice the tin ions are not soluble. They make a milky white solution. And over time, what we should be seeing at the bottom of this beaker is a buildup of white, or at least uh, what we say on the bottom here, you see a buildup of this same, see that white substance or whitish substance? That is the tin plus two ions that are appearing. So this beaker over time should look something like this on the bottom. That blue is going to disappear because the copper plus two is becoming copper zero as the tin gives its electrons. And in this case, you would say that the tin plus two is a strong enough what agent? The tin is, the tin is forcing its electrons on the copper plus two. Reducing agent. And the copper plus two is a strong enough what? Oxidizing agent. You can see maybe from this angle where that white substance is starting to appear. And that is just the, um, the development of the, um, the tin plus two being developed there. OK? So in any case, there's your plating. There's your spontaneous redox reaction. OK? And of course, in the other beaker, we're not going to have that because of the uh, non-spontaneous or, uh, in this case, combination of a poor oxidizer and poor reducer. Okay, so we can predict whether redox reactions can occur based on our net potentials. The one to the left, obviously, not occurring. All right, so from our work in reduction potentials, we can predict whether reactions occur or not based upon just adding net potentials, which, again, come from the standard cell how well they compare to hydrogen.